side of the each out of the road and I uh, be careful, uh, be careful. What is the order? Because yeah, I, uh, so road in my book, I, I do it as such. I start with uh, the yaw. So this is the z axis. So I didn't stop the gravity. So I start with the yaw, and then we have the pitch. And then we have the road. So this is like the longitudinal axis. Yeah, but it depends a bit on your application. So you have to be aware that the middle angle should not be become 90 degrees. So then things are aligned. So with that in mind, we usually pick the right angle. Okay, welcome class. Uh, welcome to the last lecture this season on uh, multi-body dynamics. Um, it's the last lecture, it's also the last homework assignment. Um, then we have, I think, two weeks, something like that, and then June 28th is the in the morning between 9 and 12 is the digital exam i will talk a little bit also about the digital exam at the end of the lecture um, yeah we have a quiz of course today by which we start with a quiz but the quiz is uh, also an uh, uh, enquête so it's a, a combination of a quiz and an enquête because i'm, I'm I'm curious what you think of all the different elements in this course. And um, yeah, let's see. So the answer, in, instead of five uh, questions, we have 12 questions, but don't, don't be afraid. It's five questions with content, and the rest is uh, just an enquête. Questionary, sorry. Um, 
Yeah, and the topic for today is rotational parameters, uh, which is totally in line with uh, last week where we talked about uh, rot uh, rotation matrices, Euler angles, and we stumbled upon the problem with the Euler angles, the gimbal lock. And uh, lo and behold, there's a solution to all your problems, and that's called the Euler parameters. And that's the topic for today. But before we do that, we go to the quiz. The quiz. So, yeah, my Kahoot. It should be quiz 11, yeah, from this season. Yeah. A uh, little bit sound. Classic. Classic. Yeah, okay. So, uh, 12 questions, 5 uh, uh, contents, and for 5 you also get points. Well, you get for all 12 points, because I, I really like when you answer the, uh, the questionnaire questions. But all the answers for the questionnaire are correct. All 4 answers are correct. Yeah? What, what is happening? Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, you, in the room you see nothing. Oh, yeah, oh, stupid me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, and the questionnaire questions are timed with 30 seconds. So for the people in the live stream, you have to answer within 20 seconds for the questionnaire. And there's about a delay of 10 seconds in the live stream. Looks stable to me. Okay, let's start. This shouldn't be too hard, right? Yeah, and please, please discuss. It's not, it's not so difficult, I guess. Okay, I, I'm a bit surprised that the majority has a wrong answer. So that means you still have to do some reading somewhere. Okay, uh, next question. About how many independent parameters in a four-dimensional space? This is really higher mathematics, huh? Yeah, okay.
pretty good. Yeah. Six, of course, because you can build with those four base vectors, six, six orthogonal planes. LSCM in the audience? No. Okay. The rotation matrix is the product of, remember there's this order in, in the multiplication and it's always the other way around like you think it is. I, I, I always have trouble with order, like is it uh, ABC or CBA or BCA or... Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. With three wrong answers, I, 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 the majority is wrong. Uh, apparently, not so good. Okay. DM. Uh, this was a question from last week. Remember. And, and, and you have enough time, eh? you have uh, two minutes, so please take pencil and paper, paper discuss with your, your neighbor. Looks a lot like last week's question, but some things are different. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. No, not really happy, but well, some people are, I guess. Yeah, DM, good. Last question, it's about angular velocity versus the rotation matrix.
Well, there are two correct answers in this case, asymmetric and singular, because it's also a singular matrix. Um, yeah. Okay, majority. Uh, now we uh, come to the enquête, eh? so the questionnaire on the course. So the first is about how, how much time did you spend on average per assignment? Oh, and I'm not connecting th these results with your identity. I blank your identity out when I look at these results. So you're voting now anonymously. Cross my heart. Yeah, that's what I expected. Okay, um, it's about the live stream and the lecture room usage. So uh, I, I'm, I'm interested about the attendance. So did you attend more than 60% of the lectures where? Lecture room or live stream or via the recording or you just didn't look at the, uh, at the lectures? You didn't need them. For some, I know the answer. Lecture room. You were always there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was what I saw. Okay. In doing the homework assignment, the TAs, were they helpful, yes or no? Very helpful, not so helpful, or were they actually putting you on the wrong track? Like, oh, they were confusing me. Can happen. Okay, yeah, a bit in between. Hmm, confusing me. Interesting. If there was no live stream, then you are, you will be very unhappy, unhappy, indifferent, or happy. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, the last one, uh, that is my mistake. <laughs> That's a very deep Freudian mistake, I guess. <laughs> okay, the recorded lectures. Were they used and very useful? Were they used and useful? Were they used and not so useful? Or you just didn't use them? Okay, that's good. It's a nice result, yeah. Um, the things I learned in the course were far more than I expected, what I expected, less than I expected. I learned very little. Okay, nice results, yeah. Um, would you like to be a TA for this course next year? Yes, maybe, no, never! Yeah. 
I mean, the pay is good. <laughs> 21 euros per hour. Yeah. Wow, yes, wow. So those never, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> well, we'll see. Okay. Uh, thank you. I have a few yeses. I'm happy with that because uh, usually I recruit from the last year, so that, that's nice. Okay, uh, save the results, direct download. Yeah, and, and please uh, give some feedback. I, I appreciate that. Okay, that's done. Yep, oh, that's nice. Okay, uh, so that finishes the quiz. Uh, everything is running here still. Then we go to the air server. Yep, then we go to the contents of the day. Uh, so, rotational parameters, uh, we're going to dive a little bit more into that. Uh, why? Well, let us recall uh, uh, where, we, where we came from. Oh, shit. Yeah, where we came from. So, uh, our dynamics eh, is usually described by what we say the Newton-Euler equations of motion. EOM, eh, equations of motion, being that the sum of all the forces is a mass times acceleration of the CM, eh, in this case, and the sum of the torques is then the inertia times the angular acceleration plus this convective term, I omega. Now, that's all very nice, eh, these equations, uh, but we want to know the motion. Uh, and of course, from from this you you can solve what is the, what is the acceleration and what is the angular acceleration. But we want to know the motion as a function of time. So um, for the linear part, that's easier. We've done that before, and it's just integrating the acceleration. You get the speed, and you integrate the speed, and you get the position. And either there are constraints or not. Now, the the more difficult part is in the orientation or in the rotation. So. If we, um, if we have the angular acceleration, we can find the new uh, uh, n plus 1 angular speed by doing this numerical integration of the angular accelerations. Uh, that's all very nice because these are vector quantities. But how do we get our, next, uh, our, our orientation? Uh, and the orientation it was described by this rotation matrix. Now, um, the change in orientation is apparently something like r dot. So is it a good plan maybe to say, well, the new r is the old rotation matrix plus the integral of r dot dt? Well, actually, that's not such a good plan because we have then nine numbers and, and the thing, uh, the, the matrix should be orthogonal and, and it, 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 it isn't when we do this. It will slowly drift off into the non-orthogonal space. And moreover, uh, I need an expression for my r dot in terms of, yeah, in terms of my orientation, so my in terms of my rotation matrix and in terms of my omega. Eh? So I, I need to calculate that. Well. That should still be sort of doable, eh, because we, we have this nice formula r dot r transpose is this omega tilde. Um, so 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 m maybe you can sort of solve the eh, the r dot from that and then integrate it. But one of the biggest problems is, of course, we have too many parameters. So what do we do? And we already did that uh, uh, last week. We parameterize the rotation matrix by, in this case, the Euler angles, eh? and it was uh, phi, theta, and psi. So instead of keeping track of the orientation by means of the rotation matrix, we say, no, now we, we use the, the Euler angle. So the state, eh, how do we describe our system, is in our case, uh, we have the attitude of the body, uh, which is not done with the rotation matrix, but done with these three Euler angles. Eh? So we have the phi, theta, and the psi. And then, so that is the uh, orientation, and then the speed, 
for the speed we just take the, the three uh, angular velocities and and it can be either body fixed or frame fixed that for now that's not the issue that's uh, not so important so that is the state of the system and then of course the dynamics of the system is is described by saying well that's the the, the derivative of the state with respect to time eh? that's a that's a dynamics and so what we have to know is we, we have to know what are these time derivatives of these Euler angles. Um, well, that is a bit tricky. Uh, I have no clue. The, the second part I know. I know what the omega dot x, omega dot y, and omega dot z is, because that just comes from my Euler equation of motion, right? I, I just, uh, for my sum of the torques is this guy plus omega cross this guy. So that is easy. But how, how about this guy? How about the time derivative of the Euler angles? The only thing I have is actually um, I have angular velocities, but angular velocities are not, of course, the time derivative of these guys. And I have these Euler angles, eh, the attitude at that moment in time. And from these two, I have to cook up what my time derivatives are from the Euler angles. Now, uh, we've been there, eh? we, we, we derive finally a nice expression for what are my angular speeds in terms of uh, the Euler angles and in terms of the time derivative of these Euler angles. So we found this expression um, since, uh, yeah, okay, zero, zero, 001, because apparently this uh, phi is a uh, is the first rotation and and that 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 axis hasn't changed so and that was about the z axis so that's st still the same and then the other ones well we have all kinds of terms and i have to peak cosine phi sine phi and here we have sine phi sine theta and here we have minus cosine phi sine theta anyway this was the way how we derived the how the time derivative of the Euler angles is connected to the Euler angles and the angular speeds of the body. But we, have to, we need the inverse relation. Eh? We need, what are the time derivatives of the Euler angles? So we need to find out what is phi dot, theta dot, and psi dot. Well, to do that, you need the determinant of this matrix. And the determinant of that matrix, so let's call this matrix A for now. So the determinant of the matrix A is... Well, it looks complex, but it isn't because uh, there are a lot of zeros. And um, so it's this one times the determinant of these two. And so that and maybe there's also a minus, but I don't know, one times. And the determinant of this guy is a minus cosine squared fine sine theta minus sine squared sine theta. So the answer is minus sine of theta. With that being the determinant, uh, I do 1 over the determinant, so 1 over sine theta, and then I have to fill in these numbers, and yeah, uh, I don't know them by head, and I can look at my paper, and well, here you have sine phi, cosine theta, etc. So just regular entries, and eh? not so interesting. But the important part is, of course, that we see uh, that, that this determinant uh, can be zero. Eh? So the determinant of A, uh, can it be zero? And then yes, the answer is theta is zero plus or minus minus k pi. So there is a singularity in trying to derive what are these time derivatives of the Euler angles. So given the attitude of the body, given the angular velocities, what, what are the time derivatives? There are some configurations where you just cannot calculate that. And we have a physical interpretation for that. Eh? Um, Let's draw the figure again, because what is going on? Uh, this was zxz, so we have this coordinate system. Um, so this is the x-axis, oh, nice x. This is the y-axis, and this is the z-axis. And then the first rotation was about the z-axis, so with an angle phi, right? And then the second rotation was this guy around the x-axis with the angle theta. And then the third rotation was this guy with the angle psi. And then here the body is connected. Eh? Here we have this, this body and here we have 
the inertial frame. And looking at the picture, we actually uh, see what is going on because about this axis is a rotation phi dot, about this ro axis is a rotation theta dot, and about this axis is a rotation psi dot. And actually all rotations, all rotation vectors are in one plane. So it, it is impossible to derive what are, because given some, uh, some arbitrary angular velocity vector, uh, you are unable to decompose that in these three parts because all three parts is, are in one plane. They are, uh, there is not this, this component, which you also readily can see if you start from this expression here and just put in zeros. Then if we put in zeros, this will be uh, zero angles, this will be a zero, this will be a zero, and this will be a zero. So we get zero, one, zero, and then all zeros, and then zero, one, zero, zero. So I have to remember that. So we have omega x, omega y, omega z equals, and then we have here uh, phi dot, theta dot, psi dot. And then the entries were a 0, a 1, and a 0. And then a whole row of zeros where you already think, oh, yeah, something is going wrong. And then a 1, 0, and a 1. There was already a 1. OK. Uh, that come. Oh, I, I, I mixed two, two things, but it doesn't matter. The, these are apparently the body fixed ones. But what we see is that uh, omega y is, yeah, is always zero. There is no way to resolve that. And we see that omega x is, is apparently uh, the theta dot. Yes, I agree with that. Eh? That's, that's in this direction. And then we see that the omega z is the combination of phi dot plus psi dot. So we are not an able to say what is psi dot or what is phi dot, and we cannot describe that. Well, we had a nice name for that. Um, we called it uh, gimbal lock, and it's not uh, because of Mr. Gimbal, eh? John William Gimbal, who lived in 1843. Nope, it's because gimbals are a way to s make, to connect three Rotations in series where the center of rotation remains the same point. And they, th those are these gimbals. So these are, yeah, gi oh, look it up. Uh, I, uh, I cannot explain it further. Uh, you see a gimbal, for instance, when you have a compass on a ship, because the ship is making all kinds of motions and you want that the, the compass stays horizontal. And so it's able to do all these rotations. Well, not the rotation about the z-axis, that's stupid. But, uh, Two, two rotations. Okay, and there was of course a solution eh, to all the problem. The solution was to, to reformulate the angle, say, well, I, I do a new theta and I'm going to add 90 degrees to that. And if you do that, then you get a, a new set of angles, eh, this one, um, and then again, this one remains the same, but now with 90 degrees added, uh, the third axis in this is in this direction. And you see, oh yeah, we have three sort of orthogonal directions, or anyway, we can cover the whole space. But that's not nice, because in numerical integration you want continuous functions, and then the function isn't continuous, there's a jump in a value, suddenly you have to restart integration, and you also have to be, a, a, if you, I mean singular, what is singular? A zero, you never have a zero in a computer, it's always almost zero, so you, you also have the feeling that if you're close to singular, results will also become dodgy. So it's not a nice way to, to use. Um, then you would think, well, if I now do a very super smart way of parameterizing, why don't I take a, a number of crooked axes and then my whole problem is solved. So uh, the professor always takes the three orthogonal directions, but you know, I take this is a first direction, and then I take a, a crooked direction there for the second, and then another crooked direction here for the third. That should work. Of course, this is the solution. Well, you can imagine that by rotating this middle axis in some way, you certainly have all axes in the plane, in one plane again, and you're in the same trouble. So that will always happen. And in very elegant, nice mathematical words, we say um, the describing such an orthogonal matrix with three parameters is in mathematics called an SO3, 
and don't ask me what it is, it's a mathematical term, look it up, and they say in SO3 we always have this problem. Okay, well that's nice to hear that mathematics have proven that. So don't look for any other way of parameterizing with three parameters this, this orthogonal matrices. It's just not possible. But there is a solution to all your problem, and that is uh, not to use three parameters, but then the solution is use four parameters. parameters. Uh, if you ca just add one parameter, and then probably you can get rid of the whole singularity problem. And then the problem is, of course, well, you intro if with four parameters you introduce that they are dependent. Eh? They're not independent anymore. So uh, there is one dependency or a dependency or, or uh, you have to add one constraint. But since we can work very well with constraints in our mechanical system, eh? we have a rigid body with constraints, I see no problem in using rotational parameters which have one constraint. And moreover, this constraint is local. Eh? It's on only within that one rigid body, those four parameters. There's no connection with the rest of the world. So solving that constraint should also be pretty simple. Now the whole idea actually builds on a theorem and, and it builds on, on, uh, on Euler's, of course again, Euler's theorem for rotation in space, rotation in space. And what does Euler say? Euler says the following, uh, any rotation or, or any or, uh, change in orientation, yeah, how should I say that, any attitude, do we like the word attitude? Shall we? Yeah. yeah, with attitude we mean change in orientation, a finite change in orientation, but uh, well, any finite uh, uh, rotation can be described by a rotation about a fixed axis over a given angle. So what does Euler say? Well, if you have a body and it is, for instance, suddenly orientated like this, then I can calculate and come to the conclusion that this was the axis of rotation and the angle was uh, 1.84, something like this. And if you say, no, the body was orientated like that, they say, oh, then this was the axis of rotation and the angle was minus 0.8356. So for every finite orientation, you can find an axis pointing in space and an angle. That is the idea. And with that concept, we, we work around, of course. We say, well, why not describe then the change in orientation by saying, well, we take an axis and we rotate about that axis. And that is the way how we describe our change in orientation. So let's make a picture of that. So we have a, some coordinate, no, we have, yeah, we have some coordinate system, uh, some inertial system, n and uh, that's x y and the z-axis. And then um, let's draw a cone, and I will explain in a minute why we draw a cone, and then in the cone I draw the axis. So here there's the axis, and I, I call the axis n, and I, I take the, the axis such that the length is 1, so the, uh, it's a unit axis. Length of this thing is 1. one. Unit axis. So and somewhere here hey, it hits the, uh, it comes out of the cone. And now what do we do? Well, we, we have a point in the body, for instance here, there's a point P. And so we have a vector here. And that's the initial vector, so I'm going to call this P prime. Oh, that's not nice, not a nice P prime. P prime. And then that is... Uh, the rotation is about this axis, right? So everything happens within this plane, eh? 
are on the surface of this cone. Uh, the point, if I rotate about this axis, point P will go on this circle on the cone. And the vector will always be describing the cone. So let's say we have an angle here, and the angle we call phi. And then a new position, that's this, this vector, P, is this one. So our parameters, our rotational parameters, rotational ooh, parameters, are this rotation axis and the angle. And what we do is, with those, we go from P prime to P. That is our transformation. And you, so you can imagine, initially, you align all the, the body and the, and the inertial frame. You pick a point and you say, OK, this axis, and then pssst, I'm going to rotate. And where is point P now? So from P prime to P. Um, now, to find out what, what the transformation is of this one, I'm going to look, uh, because everything happens in this plane, right? I'm going to look down on this plane, so I'm going to make a new picture. Uh, this, so this is now a circle, and uh, sticking out is this uh, axis of rotation, this N. The N. And, um, yeah, what do I see? I align it such that point P is now here. Or in other words, that the vector p, uh, p prime, which I saw, is this one. That's the vector p prime. And then uh, apparently there's a rotation, and everything happens in this plane. So after the rotation, the point p is here, and this is the angle phi. Now I want to find out how do I get from from p prime to p. And for that, I'm going to build a new orthogonal uh, set of vectors in this plane, and I'm going to build them with all these vectors. I'm going to call them A, so I'm going to build this vector, A, and I'm going to build a vector here, which I'm going to call B. Now, B looks a lot like P prime, but B is not P prime, because B is in the plane of that circle, and, and P prime is just a projection on that. Huh? But they look a lot identical. Now, how do I build that orthogonal plane? Um, well. A is easily built because I have here this sticking out, this um, uh, uh, axis of rotation. And if I take the cross product of this one with P prime, so cross product N times P prime, I get my A vector. Right? So, zut, zut, boop. There we are. And uh, the length is, uh, yeah, it's exactly this projected length, right? So, note that the length of uh, uh, need not be 1, right? It, it's not a unit vector. It's just the, the dimension as it is. If you want to know what is the length, actually the length is equal to the length of, of the projection of P prime. But uh, forget it. I'm not going to talk about it. It's not 1. It's not a unit vector. OK. Um, the B vector. Well, that's now easy, right? If we have the a vector and we have the n vector, yeah, there are various ways to say that. Uh, if I do a cross n, I get b, I think. Yeah, but you can do a lot better. So a cross n. A, a cross n. Yeah, I get the b vector. So now I have my two base vectors. And with those a and b vector, I can now travel starting from p prime to p. So how do I do that traveling? So I want to, finally, I want to get into, oh, zoom back. So I want to get in point p. Now how do I get there? How do I get here? Well, I start here. I start in p prime. And then uh, what do I have to do? Well, I have to go a little bit back and up, right? And then I'm, I'm, I'm there. So I have to go back from there and up. And how much do I have to go back? Well, it's something with B, but not the complete B. Something with 1 minus cosine phi, and then I have to go back. Huh? So it's minus 1 minus cosine phi. 
And then I have to go up with a plus, with A, and uh, not completely A, that's too much. Um, sine phi of A. Yeah. Okay. Now the last thing I have to do is I have to put these in here, and then I'm in business, right? So I have P equals P prime minus 1 minus cosine phi times all. Well, for B I can write, oh, I miss, I can write uh, A cross N, uh, and for A I write plus sine phi N cross P prime. Now uh, let's put in A huh, as a as a thing because we want to have everything in the n phi and p prime. So I'm going to rewrite this as one minus cosine phi, and then the A was a n cross p prime cross n, and I'm going to rewrite that. But I'm going to change the order here for a moment. I, uh, back, I'm going to do n cross n cross p prime. And if I do that, then I have to change the sign here, but I can do that. And so I get this, finally. How do we get from one to the other in this way? And now everything is expressed in terms of the angle phi, uh, sine phi and cosine phi, the, 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 the axis of rotation n, and, uh, and of course the original point. Now, with the help of the tilde notation, I can write the cross product as a matrix, because finally I want to have the rotation matrix. So what I'm going to do then is uh, I'm going to write P equals um, yeah, P prime plus 1 minus cosine phi. And then the cross products I'm going to write like this with the tilde, yeah, twice times P prime plus sine phi n with a tilde p prime. And now I can put everything as one in one big bracket. And that's the identity matrix for this guy, of course. And then we have this matrix plus 1 minus cosine phi n tilde n tilde plus sine phi n tilde. Or in other words, eh, the rotation matrix which rotates from the body fixed frame to the inertial frame and is parameterized by this axis and this angle, can be written as identity plus sine phi and tilde plus 1 minus cosine phi and tilde and tilde. And actually this is a very compact and nice way of formulating the rotation matrix. Okay. Super simple. You just have to uh, uh, have an identity. You have to, once you have to calculate sine and cosine, and you have to make some, some matrices and the product of a skew symmetric matrix, and then, poof, then you have the rotation matrix. So if you, wanna, if you know what the axis and the angle are, you can generate that matrix. Uh, as a test, of course, you can put in some, uh, some, some, some known numbers like, oh, let's see what the rotation about the z-axis is over an angle phi. Well, fill it in and you will see, you will get that nice matrix which we used in the Euler angles. But it holds for any axis at any rotation. Still, there is a small problem with the axis angle uh, parameters, and that is that the dimension of the parameters is different, right? So we have here length, so that's meters or whatever, and this is an angle in radians or degrees. Actually, to be honest, I don't know what the radians are. Some say it's dimensionless, but that's not true because if it's dimensionless, how can you then come from radians to degrees? And so they are sort of magic, but anyway. Radians and, and length. And of course, there's the constraint. Eh? Remember, we were thinking, oh yeah, we're now in business, it's super easy, but it's not so easy because the constraint on our parameters is, eh, on our n phi, is cn is that n dot n, eh, the, the dot product minus one, this should be zero. Eh? It should be a unit vector. 
Oké, okay, uh, ja, koffiebreek, hè. Dat is wel een beetje difficult now. It's too much. 